Good morning, Bulldogs. Welcome to another day of virtual instruction as we uh, round out our year. It's Thursday, June 4th, 2020, and here's today's top stories from both the New York Times and BBC News. As you can see, the top story now continues to be um, protests and events related to the death of Mr. George Floyd in Minneapolis. COVID stories are still apparent on the front page, but you have to scroll down to about halfway through. Um, today, there are plans to be a memorial for Mr. Floyd in Minneapolis, where hundreds, if not thousands, are expected to gather. Um, most of the protests have been peaceful. Uh, last night, on the ninth night of protests, um, the number of people have been increasing um, at these protests, um, but there still have been pockets of violence and looting here or there. Some small fires um, uh, in D.C. last night, not of buildings per se. Um, other big news related to it, um, if you see down there, Jim Mathis, he is the former defense secretary under President Trump, actually, and he's a four-star um, Marine, so a well-respected military figure, um, and he wrote uh, an op-ed piece um, condemning the president's actions and uh, saying that he's actually a threat to the Constitution and that his words and his actions his photo ops, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, have been dividing America. So you can Google search it and easily find it. There's been some other um, moves um, from within the president's circle, sort of against his actions. Um, Esper, uh, a current secretary, said he did not want to use um, federal active military troops for these protests. Um, he did say that what the police did in Minnesota were wrong, um, but. It ended up that with, there was like a last minute turn and federal troops have been used um, in D.C. Uh, related to those um, stories, you'll see big news yesterday um, that the officer who did have his knee on Floyd's neck um, did have his charges increased to second jury degree murder. And the other three officers who were present were also arrested and charged with aiding and abetting that. So we'll continue to see these um, developments throughout the day um, and, you know, before we meet again. Uh, the BBC stories are very similar. Um, the story of James Mattis um, uh, not being happy with the president's words and actions. The press secretary uh, spoke yesterday and she... Um, likened the president to Churchill in World War II. Some people may agree, some people say not so close. Um, we will learn about World War II in a day for our last class. That is not how I planned for us to learn about World War II. Um, but actually, we've moved further along than people expected. We will under virtual instruction. So for that, I'll be proud. Remember, you do cover World War II in US too. So it's not like you're not going um, to learn about it. You do see some other articles here. Um, oil spill uh, in Russia. Um, South Korea plans to stop balloons. North Korea. All right, all sorts of things. These were on Hong Kong. Other things that would normally be like really huge stories are now getting the back burner. Uh, so to speak. So um, today I have two events that you may want to share uh, on your timelines. Hopefully you did notice um, on Canvas that I put your final project, and I'll go over that in a few minutes. Um, so you want to make sure you've had at least eight events um, on your timeline since we've been home in virtual instruction. Um, don't really do the music of this day. I mean, if you have one or two, it's not the end of the world, but you really want to talk about like historical um, events. So Today is a big day because 101 years ago, Congress approved the 19th Amendment, and that is what guaranteed suffrage or the right to vote for women. This was a hard-fought campaign um, that took decades and decades, right? Um, Susan B. Anthony did, did not live to see um, oh, the woman getting the right to vote. Um, this is the Speaker of the House signing the bill there. Um, so what happened here is it did not mean that all women could vote. It mean it had to was then sent to states, and the state, a certain number of states had to ratify it. So it really wasn't until August of 2020 that women did receive the right to vote. So you'll probably be seeing things this summer about women selling, celebrating the 100th anniversary of that. Um, it is noteworthy, because of what's going on in the world today, to note what methods do women take to get that right to vote. Um, at some points in our history, they were working with black Americans who needed 
the right to vote also. Um, so black men did earn the right to vote first. Sometimes they worked opposed. Sometimes they worked very peacefully. Sometimes they did um, the forms of people peaceful protests like hunger strikes, which if you learn more about were not as peaceful as you think when people were then force fed um, in, in prisons and the like. And there were some violent actions as well. More violent actions for their to vote actually also in um, England, if you ever want to read about Emmeline Pankhurst and mail bombs and all sorts of things. So just important to know what are, what's the same and what's different. Okay. Also on to this day in history, oh, there we go. Oh, I'm moving. Um, we have a, a story related to the Holocaust. I am happy that we covered many Holocaust uh, events when we did on this day throughout the year, especially knowing that we're not going to be able to spend a week on it like uh, we normally would have done um, if school was in session. So um, that is one of the other things that bothers me uh, about not getting to all the material we normally would have covered. Once again, you will also cover it in, in US too. But you know, as you go through your timelines, if you put a lot of things down, hopefully you do, you do recognize a lot of the events that we discussed this year. This is another unfortunate case related to the Holocaust. And this is of M.S. H. or Her Majesty's ship, um, St. Louis. This was a, a ship um, that carried refugees, um, people who were escaping persecution under the Nazis in World War II. And these people needed to have proper documentation. Not anyone could just get on this ship. But when they did, they were then hoping to find refuge in the New World. So they first went to Cuba, and Cuba was like, not so fast, you, you can't stay here. And then they went to Florida and Florida said, no, you can't, you can't stay here either. So when we learn um, uh, in US two and future years about, you know, what role did the US play? You know, why did we say, no, you can't, you can't come here for safety. Um, do we do things like that now as a nation? All right, so um, of, this, um, of this group, many of them being children, over 200 of them ultimately did die in concentration camps because they were forced to return. So a very unfortunate story. Um, and feel free to go online and read more about it, learn more about it. And if you want to discuss it more or you learn something you want to share with us, you know, please let me know. Um, also for on this day, you may want to check yesterday's video um, as you learn about the riots um, going on now. It's also the anniversary of the Zoot Suit riots um, in California in 1943. Um, primarily against Mexican American immigrants, but also others. So if you're still looking for events for your timeline, you're curious about what's going on in the world today, um, I recommend you go back and check that out. So as I mentioned, um, your final portfolio project assignment is due last week. Okay, if we were still in school, this would have been much more elaborate. Um, but I, you know, we're all coming, uh, handling different situations right now. I want to make this as simple as possible. You can literally uh, turn in a document with just four links on it and you don't have to explain anything. You know, as long as it's your work, that's fine. Okay. So the, if you want to go and make it pretty and make it into a website or a PowerPoint you have for future years, you have the time to do it more power to you. But I mean, you can literally get an A just for putting four links. Okay. So the first link is your first trimester portfolio. Your second link is your second trimester portfolio. Your third one is your most recent contest. Pretty much you should have all submitted um, a contest by like February, March. Okay, if, if, you're, um, if your last contest you submitted was like December, you should be like, oh, I, I probably dropped the ball somewhere. So if you didn't do the podcast, I don't know, no one in block seven um, was doing that, but if there's something you drop the ball on when virtual instruction happens, which is understandable, we had a lot going on, I gave you an option I'll share with you in a second. Okay, the last thing is the timeline. Um, the timeline should, once again, if you have those spreadsheets, you're not going to share the link to your spreadsheet, but you're going to take that spreadsheet and put it into a website, and that's going to make a really cool timeline for you. I'll show you that in a second. That link is there in the document. If it's not working for you, um, for whatever reason you're putting in the links and you can't get it to work, please don't get too frustrated. Um, try a little bit first. Um, we have students here who are um, computer science students and they're probably good at this and you can shoot them an email or a message and they will probably help you. It's probably something simple you need to fix, right? It should be easy. 
Um, if you're like, this is, I can't do this. I'm just going to make my own timeline on a piece of paper or digitally or on chalk drawings on the sidewalk, feel free to do so. Um, I just want you to know that hopefully if you put that link in, it should just take a couple of seconds for you to do. All right. For in that timeline, you need a minimum of 25 events. Most of you had 25 events before we even let out of school. Block seven, I noted, noted was always like putting down events every day, whether it was Tuesday or not. I was really impressed with you guys. Um, you want eight or more to be from the time we were in virtual instruction because that was about a third of the year. So just today you had two. So um, that's, hopefully that's easy. Now, if you missed a contest, there is this writing competition. You'd have to have it like done basically by today, tomorrow the latest, because you have to submit it by tomorrow. If you're doing it, let me know. Um, and actually, if you're doing it, you'll just post it to Canvas. Um, but you're basically writing a story for children. Pretty simple. Um, I know you're not all of you are great writers, but you get to be creative here. Some of you have great imaginations, great writing skills. Um, you know, give it a shot. You could win um, first place, two hundred fifty dollars. That's pretty nice, um, and it's another good thing to have if you win to have for future, you know, college applications and things like that. So, um, if you've already done your most recent um, your most recent contest and you want to enter this anyway, you know, hey. Go for it. Okay, so when you make your timelines, I included this link for you. And you literally just go down step by step. It's nightlab.com, um, but then this, I gave you the link that has the specific one to the timeline. And you're basically taking your spreadsheet, make sure you have certain um, settings on it, putting it here, and then it produces a new website for you with a really cool looking website. Um, you can add photos and things so to make your website look even cooler. You're not required to. Like I said, I sort of pared this all down because of virtual instruction. Um, this should work. Um, if you're having any issues, like I said, you, you can always um, do something different if, it, if you just find it easier. Okay, so we miss you guys so, so much. Um, I can't wait to um, see some of more of your work and um, share your thoughts and stuff. Now, I didn't mention today's assignment. Today's assignment are two actively learn assignments. One is on um, the Tulsa race riots, and one is on the riots and protests going on now. Um, I will average the two together. Um, some of them are a lot of short answers that are not so, so much right or wrong, but I just want you to reflect, because since we can't meet and discuss these heavy current event stories like we optimally would be able to, it's good for you to think um, and process this information. So um, that's what we're looking forward to. Okay. Um, we'll be ready for the last assignment uh, next class. And once um, I have the final exam, it's not even a final exam, our semester exam, um, all said and done, I'll give you guys a little video on what to prepare for. It's nothing that should stress you out. Okay. Stay safe, guys. Be well.